Welcome to Locked On Warriors, everybody. I'm Wes Goldberg, and in a moment, I will be joined by Dieter Kurtenbach, the columnist over at the Bay Area News Group, for part two of our training camp preview. We're answering the five biggest questions facing the Warriors going into training camp next week. And on today's show, we'll talk about James Wiseman's health and what the Warriors' plan is with the center rotation in general. If you haven't checked out part one, make sure to find that in your podcast feed or here on YouTube, where Dieter and I break down the latest regarding the Warriors' plan for backup point guard and who they're bringing in for workouts. But here we go with part two coming up next. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Um, Speaking of health, that goes to our second biggest question on the Warriors, James Wiseman's health. Now, Mm. the Warriors have been optimistic all along that Wiseman uh, from this MCL injury would be ready for training camp. We have not got any sort of clearance on that. Uh, Granted, we are a couple weeks away from that. Um, And so I was able to catch up with him a couple times, once in Sacramento, once in Las Vegas, asked him how he was doing. He wasn't on the walking boot. He looked, he was moving fine. He was walking through hallways fine, but that's much mm-hmm. different than playing in an NBA game. Um, yeah. I would imagine. I have never done that. One would, but... one would hope. One would hope that your level of exertion and, uh, and force is a little bit higher than walking through the hallways at the Thomas and Mack Center. That's right. Um, and so he said he was doing well, that he expects to play in training camp, but he's not the doctor. And he, of course, he's going to say it. Right. Tell me that. I'm a reporter. So um, <laughs> we'll see. But he was, he, I did also see him working out in Las Vegas on the court. Uh, that was a really good sign. He seemed to be moving well um, and all those things. So I think if 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 I had to place a bet, and this is with all – now now you know and the listeners know all of the things that I know. I don't know anything more than what I just right. said. Uh, right. If I had to place a bet on it, I would say he participates in training camp. Maybe it's not the first day, but I think he's going to mm-hmm. be on the floor. Maybe he's not doing the full five-on-five contact drills, but he will be on the floor in training camp. They will at least get a look at him, and I expect him to at least play mm-hmm. something in the preseason. Yeah, I, I think that that's a very fair expectation. I mean, you have to remember that this kid's a baby. I mean, he's he's a very large baby, but he's a he's an infant child compared to the rest of us, and uh, they seem to bounce back a little bit better. So the hope is that it, it, the fear, of course, is that you know you have his Greg Oden situation where he's a big man, but Greg Oden's looked like a fifty year old man his entire life. Like right. he just looked like he was brittle, and so you're just hoping it's not like a a man child situation where the body was, you know, grew too fast and it was just never going to happen. Like James Wiseman, such a graceful athlete, such a, uh, he looks so connected and, and sort of, you know, centered in his body. Like he, he looks natural at seven yeah. one, which is wild. I, it was maybe the biggest takeaway I had from him his rookie year um, in, in the positive, just like, wow, like what a fluid big man. Those are so rare. I mean, even the best of the best, lack that level of fluidity and and you can only you know allow yourself to extrapolate so much before you kind of get over your skis but um yeah the hope the hope is that he remains that you know that fluid because that's going to be his greatest skill set moving forward especially in this positionless modern mba where you know you want him inside outside everywhere and and, um just being able to run the floor too is huge i'm gonna bet on it i'm just gonna bet on it just uh it's not scientific at all, but you know, if he was that fluid to begin with, I have to imagine that his his body's pretty good. Like yeah, it, and you, seven one man, I've been I've been six nine for a long time. Like some people are built for it, some people aren't. Uh, I was luckily built for it, but even I have like little nagging things from football and you know basketball, and, like high school. Like he seemed to not have any of that kind of stuff coming in. So the, the yeah. joys of only playing three games at Memphis, I suppose. But um, I mean, yeah, I, I'm going to, he's I'm gonna young. He doesn't him. have a lot of miles on those tires either. Right. So yep. it's, it's um, I mean, but to that point, he also, because he has so little experience, even for somebody his age, he has no experience, mm-hmm. little experience. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. He needs more experience. Uh, one thing yeah. is for sure. He will not be starting on opening night. And no. he, I don't really know exactly what his role is going to be. And that kind of gets us into our, Next question, what does the center rotation look like? Because Kevon Looney will start at center for the Warriors opening night, and I expect him to start for the season as long as he's healthy. Um, Yeah. Obviously, I think a lot of people would pencil in James Wiseman as the obvious pick for a backup point, uh, backup center, Mm -hmm. but they also signed Amanja Bializia in part to be a floor spacing five. Mm -hmm. I I know what Bializia brings me if he is in condition. 
I didn't list Felix's yeah. conditioning on my list of questions, but it is a question I have. What does he look like in training yeah. camp? Because he was not in yeah. shape in Miami, and he was out of the rotation within a week of them trading for him. But we'll see what. By that the looks way, like. my, if, if, if he if, at least he showed up to Miami out of shape. It wasn't like he was on Miami yeah. and found a way to get out of shape, which is almost impossible given the sort of uh, calisthenics that they do there. So. Right, and he's had a whole <laughs> off season to prepare for this, um, and yeah. so. Um, I don't know. I don't know what it looks like because not only do they have Wiseman and Bielitsia, but they have Draymond Green. They have Juan Descano Anderson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a lot of different variations that they can get into once Kevon Looney is off the floor. I don't know that any of them, I don't know that any of those players have a defined role in respect to the center position, right? Like Draymond Green is obvious. We know what he's going to do. How many minutes is he going to get as a small ball five? I don't know. Will Juan get mm -hmm. any? Will he get all of them I don't, during Probably the regular not. season? I have no idea. Uh, I think this is something that they need to figure out in training camp. Well, it's so tricky, too, because the Warriors have broken down rotations with the center position. Very, very Excel-like and appreciatively. Yes. So, like, first six minutes, second six minutes, that's the first quarter. First six minutes, second quarter, last six minutes, second quarter, and so on and so forth. And if I had to bet right now, I would say it would be Looney, Wiseman, Bielitsa as the small ball five with the second second unit, and then with Steph off the floor and Draymond off the floor. And then those two guys come back on, and the hot hand, the best matchup, runs for the final roughly six minutes. So that could be Draymond at the five. Yeah. That could be Bielitsa at the five for, you know, kind of a, a you know, it goes an extra minute sits on the bench for two, comes back on for the final three or four. Uh, it could be Wiseman if he's having a nice game. He'll have plenty of opportunity, and I think that they'll want to put him out in those situations, especially in the first half, where there's a little bit of tenseness in those minutes. Uh, and there will be plenty of loony for defensive purposes. But this is the way that Steve Kerr wants to run his centers, right? Uh, he wants to have an – exactly, the bullpen. I used to call them keystone centers where they kind of fill in the lineup of an arch, but that really got more associated with keystone cops, and that's not fair to them. Um, <laughs> It's uh, it's absolutely the bullpen. And as we see in modern baseball, you know, the bullpen is not seventh inning, eighth inning, ninth inning guys. It's uh, it's particularly, you know, leverage situations, you know, splits on, on certain lineups and all that. Like that, I think that's how Kerr is going to play the final six minutes of the first half in the, in the game. And uh, I think that that's probably the best way to go about it because they don't have one guy that they can trust. And I don't even know if there's a center who exists in the NBA. Even the, I mean, maybe Anthony Davis and Carl Anthony Towns, that's about it. Who, or Bam, maybe Bam, who you're like, every night, final six of the game has to be on the floor. You can't even say that with Rudy Gobert. No, I mean, you could say with Joel Embiid just because of how dominant he is and the way he just shifts yeah. the game into his version of playing but that's fair to your point okay. you're absolutely let's right. just say there's a handful of guys yeah, <laughs> yeah. that fit that role but in, and, even anthony uh, davis plays power forward most of the game so he yeah. i don't even know if you could put him in that conversation today's episode is brought to you by direct tv stream does this sound familiar you've got one device that lets you catch the game live another that helps you stream your favorite shows and you're watching sports highlights on your phone and you've got your neighbor's best friend's login for the good stuff. Well, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all of the entertainment that you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before. So you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes, no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. In 2018, the fantasy sports experts at Sleeper realized that fantasy basketball was broken. Games were being won and lost based on whose players had more scheduled games that week. It made no sense and required very little strategy. So in 2020, Sleeper released a brand new way of playing fantasy basketball. It's called Game Pick, and it's only available on Sleeper. In Game Pick, owners pick a single game per week for each starter to count towards their team's total score, ensuring an even number of games played between opponents. The days of losing because your opponent's players simply had more scheduled games to play in that week are over. The days of mindless busy work are over. The days of giving up halfway through the season because of that busy work also over. In Game Picks, you pick one game per week, 
for each player based on player matchups, home versus away, opponent's defensive ranking, pace of play, whatever. All of that adds up to more strategy and less busy work. Whether you prefer redraft, keeper, or dynasty, Game Picks has you covered. Sleeper, crack the fantasy basketball code. If you play fantasy football, if you prefer building out a weekly strategy versus daily busy work, you're going to love Game Picks. Download the Sleeper app and start a league with your friends today. You're not going to be disappointed. Um, I will say this. I, I think you're absolutely right. It, it, you say it's like an Excel spreadsheet approach to playing center. I've always imagined it that way, too. It is very formulaic. Uh, and, and chalk that up to Mike Brown and all the Excel spreadsheets that he literally uses. He probably has he loves put them. that. He loves them. Uh, color-coded and everything. But mm. I, I would maybe I, I would not be shocked. I'll say it this way. I would not be shocked if... Your order of Looney, Wiseman, Bielitsa, if you swip, be, swapped Bielitsa and Wiseman, and maybe Bielitsa uh, was the first center off the bench. Because you yeah. could play him then with, if you're going to have Draymond and Steph playing most of the first quarter, then intuitively it kind of makes sense to have the Bielitsa in there as a floor spacing five to kind of yeah. counteract what it is that Draymond Green doesn't give you on offense. Um, I I'm not saying either way. I, I could also see them and say, hey, we need to get Wiseman minutes with these guys. But and that's, that and that's my thought. sailed. Like I really now, don't know. What do we make? What do you What do you do with well, James Wiseman? Is my biggest question. Well, uh, would, uh, let me ask it this way, Dieter. What would you yeah. do with James Wiseman this season? I'd run him. You would. I'd run him. Like I'm of the mindset, pretty clearly, that the Warriors are not going to be a top regular season team. Now I think, luckily for that, no, there's a lot of people out there who are delusional and think so. Of course, uh, but. Uh, that, that's what happens when you're the, the greatest basketball team we've ever seen, but uh, not recently for sure. Uh, the D'Angelo Russell trade brought that to an end. So uh, <laughs> uh, I just wanted to be a final one, final D'Angelo Russell jab in on you before, before we parted. Um, it's. <sighs> they're not going to be a top regular season team. That's fine. Yeah. You need to figure out what Wiseman is last year. I don't think was a fair representation because the team was trying to figure out what it was throughout the entire year. They found something at the end. They can't let that go. And that was small ball, run them off the floor. Juan Toscano Anderson, who, by the way, his number one skill set is setting a tone. Um, it's uh, it's those sort of things. They need to remain tapped into that. Kevon Looney was obviously part of that, even though he's not much of a runner these days. Um, and So they, they just have to figure it out with him and without clay in the lineup for who knows how long and without him being a hundred percent for who knows how long, I think that they have some room to really experiment. And it sucks that Wiseman's coming off an injury because now you have to sort of slow pedal him in. But if I had my druthers, I'd want to see as much Steph and Wiseman together as possible early uh, to try out some of the things that, the coaching staff should have been doing this entire off season, which is how do we meld these two styles together? How do we get Wiseman to play more of the Curry style of basketball, be more Draymond green. And how do we get the warriors to be more direct as well, play more direct basketball, get that weak side pick and roll going, all that kind of stuff that, that uh, smart people talk about that is totally beyond me most days. So uh, I, I, yeah, just, I just need to see more because I, he, I think that he has, I still think he has the potential to be an impact player. And I don't write off anybody by rule until they can legally drink in the United States of America. I just don't think that's fair. In fact, 25 seems like a good time to write somebody off, but by then James Wiseman will be a griddled veteran on his third contract. So I'm not sure that that really applies. I, I just, I want to, I want to see more of him early so that you don't have to experiment late right. and putting him in at the end of the first quarter, end of the third quarter with Curry and Draymond might not be, as you alluded to the strongest tactical matchup, but I think it will bear the most fruit moving forward because it's, it's the preseason of, you know, th those are, you know, the second quarter, right? Like that's like for end of the first quarter. Uh, those are kind of, lighter minutes but you know you have the aces on you can develop some chemistry you can develop some rhythm with those guys and that's what they really need to do or they need to figure out hey th this does this guy suck. like th this guy can't work with these guys and what we're going to do is we're going to have an entire other system built around james wiseman that we're going to run at the beginning of the second quarter and in which case that's fine but he's a bust then 
and uh, right. you need to look about trading him somewhere where he could probably garner some value as that second quarter guy. Then you could maybe trade him. But uh, I, I need it, if it doesn't work with Steph and Draymond. If you've already conceded that, then you need to concede the player altogether because he doesn't have value to you. Well, I and think maybe if, can... if it doesn't if it doesn't work with him right now, that's not the end of the world. And I do agree with you that no, they'll um, be fine as a team. Yeah, I, and... I, it just sucks. It sucks that they use the number two overall pick for a guy <laughs> who, in a shortened pandemic season, was deemed to be completely incompatible with winning in san francisco like that's that's not acceptable and that's a larger conversation if i'm the warriors i'm trying to make sure that that is either the absolute truth or to, you know a total overreaction to one weird year but yeah. i need to find that out as soon as possible because once clay comes back clay is the second unit guy you know that that, that was a role that he had pre kevin durant and was good at it um you know, when Clay comes back, he's, you know, the entire, the calculus of the lineup changes pretty significantly right. with Clay in the lineup. And knowing what you have with Wiseman is huge in that regard because Clay is not going to be, <laughs> no one has ever asked, can you play with Clay? It's right. never happened once. Clay right. works with everybody, he, he brings out the best in everybody. He is the ultimate glue guy in every regard known to man. So, Steph Curry, who is obviously idiosyncratic, and Draymond Green, who's even more idiosyncratic, can work with James Wiseman. Then congratulations, he's going to be a hit with Clay Thompson on the floor too. Right. But they again, they need to find that out now because I'm not ready to go on the same line that you are, or at least you were entertaining there uh, probably 25 minutes ago before I started this rant that uh, he that he can't he can't work with those guys and that he needs to have his own other thing. I, I need I, to, I need to I need to see more before I get there. They do too. And that's what's so important about training camp. So important about practices It's going to be so important about preseason. It's what's so devastating about this MCL injury mm -hmm. is that they didn't get that. And before the MCL injury, it seemed like he was turning a corner, but he was all, that was also a very short sample size for a rookie. And yeah. I don't know, really, I know a lot of Warriors fans are kind of holding on to that. Like, look, he was ready and he's just going to come back from this and he's just going to continue that development. But we know that development is not linear in that way. We know that um, rookies have ups and downs and that maybe it just wasn't a high for him and a low was, was incoming. And it was and, also and such a limited role, right? Like it was, it was such a, like, you only do these two things, which it sucks that they had to get to that point. And I'm not knocking that methodology. I'm okay with that. I mean, that's how DeAndre Ayton got to where he is. I think you do need to narrow in his yeah. role. I thought that was actually what the problem was early on, was that they were like, I don't know, just go out there and do James Wiseman stuff. And everybody's like, well, we don't know what that is. And he was like, I don't really know what it is either. <laughs> well, and... no, the, problem is, the problem is Steve Kerr saw James Wiseman stuff, had a conniption. And then it's like, no more James Wiseman stuff. And they're like, but keep you know figuring out what it is you are as an NBA player. And he's like, but I was told not to do some of those things. Like, you know, shoot threes. And... uh yeah, I've got questions. And that's my yeah. thing is if if it weren't for the injury, I would agree with you. Just put him in there. Let him run. The other problem is, too, I know that the beginning of the season, you're just sort of holding water until Clay comes back. But they all the Warriors need yeah. to win some games early on until Clay comes back, they will. because I don't know if they will. I mean, they'll win some games. They need to win enough games. <laughs> uh, How many to, times do they play Sacramento early? <laughs> not enough. Um, oh, yeah, fair. This is a team that's missed the playoffs two years in a row. You can't take any regular team season game for granted at this point you just right. haven't earned that you haven't earned that let's hear from our friends at built bar did you know that built bar has a ton of delicious flavors there's something for everybody when you talk to a built bar fan they're definitely passionate about their faves if you don't know the built bar flavors well you're missing out they have coconut cherry barcia raspberry mint brownie double chocolate salted caramel strawberry orange cookies and cream and german chocolate do you know what my favorite flavor is well if you've been listening to this podcast as long as i have been doing it, and remember, not going to be doing it that much longer, uh, you know that I do the fruit uh, covered in chocolate flavors. Uh, I recently posted about my engagement on Instagram, and I had people coming back at me saying what they had, what their favorite Bill Bar flavor was, which was not exactly topical, but I appreciate the passion. If you haven't tried all the flavors, you can get a mixed box where you can get two each of the nine flavors, so you can choose your favorite. Not only are Bill Bar flavors the best tasting, they're healthy too. Check out the macros, 17 to 18 grams of protein. Calories ranging from 130 to 180. 
only four to five grams of sugar, only four to five grams of net carbs, amazing flavors, all tasty, all healthy. So go to built.com and use the promo code that locked 15 and you'll get 15% off on your next order. That's promo code locked 15 for 15% off at built.com. Let's also talk about bet online. We're back and better than ever. All eyes are on the gridiron as teams are back on on the field to start another football season. As always, BetOnline is your number one spot for all of the pro and college football action this season. With a new and updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, BetOnline.ag continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 100% Welcome bonus. That's double your initial deposit, people. Just for signing up, don't forget to use that promo code NFL100 from football, basketball, boxing, right now to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Maybe your fantasy football team has already gone to crap. Well, you can make up for it with betonline.ag. Start betting on the games every weekend. Bet online, the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts. They also don't have to treat every game like it's, you know, game seven of the NBA finals. And I understand that those are two polar opposites and totally uh, a ridiculous comparison. But, you know, I, I, it, it's critical for everybody who's listening to avoid sky is falling nonsense if they're two and three to start the year. Right. Like the Western Conference is very flat. I think that there's a stratification that happens like pretty well after the Warriors. Like we're talking like kind of the way it all played out last year. Mm -hmm. Um, But the Warriors, again, remember how crappy they were for weeks and weeks and weeks. I mean, Mm -hmm. they, they were a tough watch, which is something I never thought I'd say. And it wasn't until they just embraced small ball that they started kind of revving it up and the defense got to where it needed to go and like hey things are happening otherwise it was a disorganized mess the pandemic was playing was messing them up it didn't give them the ability to really develop any you know practice time chemistry or anything like that with the the restrictions um that were in place i mean it's still going to be some level of that stuff this year but it was a shallow roster without an identity and you know trying to fit around two of the best players in the NBA with a bunch of guys who were either trying to figure themselves out or didn't have any idea and couldn't play with those two kind of players. Didn't fit the Warriors system. I mean, Brad Wanamaker is not a garbage player. He really isn't. He just was never, I mean, I I shouldn't say he was never because I thought he actually would work out just fine, but he he didn't fit. It didn't fit and it was never going to fit. Well, he couldn't shoot. That was the problem. Couldn't make a shot for, to save his life. Um, Yeah. He should have and, just gone and, to that 12 foot spot on the baseline and just only hit those because yeah. it seemed to work out in the past. But I, I just spot. think, I think that this year they have more ability to tinker, more ability to kind of figure stuff out. Yeah. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's prudent for them to worry about seeding or anything. I think they're one of the six best teams in the Western conference. And I think that if they have to ramp it up towards the end, they'll be well served for, you know, the experimentation that they did early in the campaign, because there's just nobody who's going to force the issue for them. I I just don't see a log jam where it's like, God, you know, they're going to need to establish an early cushion so that they can do it. Just you, they, they, the Western conference is such to where, and this is going to sound crazy, where they can figure it out on the fly and clay will come back. That will be an emotional boost. There will be injuries that, you know, we can't foresee that will be, you know, completely, you know, demoralizing. It could end a season, obviously. Um, I just, I, I, I'm very touch and go with this, with this Warriors team right now. Just well, that's mentally. a good thing about, that's what we learned about Steve Kerr last year is mm-hmm. that by the end of a season, he could figure it out. And we had not seen that yeah. before because it had all been figured out before the season even started. And totally. last year, give him credit. Uh, there were some things that happened, injuries, other things, but. His hand got he, forced, but he, he, but he, he did figure it out. Hand. He yeah. figured it out. And, and that's what the best coaches do is they take the hand that they're dealt and make the most out of it for mm-hmm. years. He was handed a Royal flush and he was just saying, don't lose with this. Cause it's impossible to lose with it. And yep. last year, I, I don't want to go too far into the poker analogy here, but he wasn't mm-hmm. dealt quite as good a hand and he eventually figured it out. Did he win the whole pot? No, they didn't even make the playoffs, but he did pretty good with it. And that was impressive, which takes Let's us question. sort of next to our next 
Oh, good. Well, I want to throw I want to throw in one more poker analogy here. I mean, yes, yeah, please. you say that his hand wasn't as good, but like, okay, he had the ace of spades he and did. he had a king of clubs. He also had a two, a four, and you know, and an Uno card that was randomly thrown in there. Exactly, that's exactly <laughs> the Joker. How did the Joker get into this? Like, it, it's great if you you have some good cards, but they need to work together in mm -hmm. some way. You need to have everybody in the same suit. I don't care if you have a two, three, a four, and a five if they're all in the same suit. I don't right. care if. You know, if you have a bunch of really high cards, okay, well, good. They need to make a flush. Sometimes you can have all these high cards and, oh, you're missing the, you're missing the jack. And now you don't have, you know, now you don't have a team that can really get it done. The expectations for the Warriors are much lower. They're obviously not like title or bust. Now it's playoffs or bust. Right. And that's also important to keep in mind as we progress into this thing. Like championship expectations need to be earned by this team, whereas they were sort of presumed obviously for five years well for four years um post the first title and then you know in continuity afterwards because it's very hard to drop something like that but i think they, they have a better hand this year i really do and uh I, I i think that they need to go through a lot of the same processes that they did last year with better hand to yeah. see if any of these combinations can work together because it's not going to work. They cannot do what they did at the end of last season and hope it transfers over. It's different personnel. They got tired as hell at the end of that thing. It was not a viable model moving forward. It was a fail safe play that Kerr probably should have gone to a little earlier. And he was vindicated in not doing that because they ran out of gas at the end. So they need to figure out, you know, a couple of different kinds of smoke here, a couple of different combinations of hands that they can play uh, and they're not going to be able to do that with just training camp. That's going to require getting funky during some games. And, you know, some people will view that as, oh, they, you know, through that game, maybe, but they need to find stuff out in October, November, December, so that when, you know, clay comes back, you have a little bit of run up time with them. But by the time you get to, you know, MLK day, Valentine's day, you're ready to rumble. You're ready right. to punch, and then you can learn how to, you know, you already can, you already know a couple of ways that you can win, and now you can see if you really stack up with other teams and, right. and, and build up to this, but this is, for a team that includes so many champions and, and great champions, it is kind of wild. It's like a team that's just being put together for the first time, and it's having to learn how to win. Um, and it and, is. And, I mean, yeah. outside of those champions, it very much is, and by the way, all those yeah. things you're talking about, how they got to figure it out through the season, that's absolutely what it has to be. And by the way, welcome to the rest of the NBA Warriors fans. That's kind of how <laughs> yeah. it is for every team. And get ready right. because that will be the Steve Kerr soundbite that we hear over and over and over uh, again. The real NBA. When somebody like uh, Nate Duncan asks him, what the hell was he doing with his lineup at the end of the season? No, right. No. And, wow, we're really just throwing Nate Duncan under the those bus. Those are the there. kinds of questions he'll ask. Like he'd actually, he doesn't ask that many questions post game, but no. uh, that seems like something he would ask is like one of those, you know, minute details. Fucking Kawakami is going to be coming in here looking Kawakami, for Kawakami. That's a good Kawakami asks those questions. That's a good one. He, he asks those, like, hey, Steve, <laughs> yeah, what were you doing at the end of the, in the last, and Steve's going to say, hey, look, man, it's December and I'm still figuring this bleep out. Uh, yeah. And, and, and that, then everyone and, will go on the light years and they'll be like, I think we should kill Steve Kerr. <laughs> who wants to form a riot on chase center right, right now right and then somewhere you and i will just be like or it's december uh right, right. and at the risk of stretching the uh, poker analogy way too far yep, yes he's got this further. new hand he's also got a suited card up his sleeve somewhere that he's ready to just pop mm. out with some me mechanical device like a magician uh we just don't know what <laughs> suit clay thompson is going to be is it going to be a jack or, right. or king we have no idea all right, that'll do it for part two of our big training camp preview, answering the biggest questions facing the Warriors going into training camp next week. Uh, on our next episode, in part three, Dieter and I will discuss Clay Thompson's health, what the Warriors will do at starting shooting guard while they wait for Clay Thompson's return, and then how much we can realistically expect Moses Moody and Jonathan Kaminga, the two rookies, to contribute early on in the season. That's coming up later on. Make sure to get that by subscribing to Lockdown Warriors on uh, whatever your podcast feed is, and then, of course, subscribing on YouTube. But for now, that's it for us today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you next time.